Hey folks, here's the next update for my Retro Challenge contribution. As you know, if you watched my previous video, I am actually um, building a MIDI drum computer or maybe even a MIDI track sequencer with my Bubble Retro LED Display Microtronic Emulator, the original being from 1981 and that being a recent recreation using Arduino basically. And um, I designed that board and um, I didn't anticipate to do something like uh, MIDI with it, right? But I found a free pin to which I could use, uh, assign the uh, software serial UART-TX for the X2 MIDI module and that sounds pretty good as a general MIDI sound module, right? It's from Zerda Shop, so I can highly recommend that module. And I already showed you in my previous video that I can send MIDI pitch uh, drum notes basically to the X2 using two registers, right? Those are four bit registers in the Microtronic. So I have a BCD encoded um, registers 0 and 1 for the uh, drum number, for the pitch number, for general MIDI channel 10 where the drums are, right? And that way I could basically play the drums. Of course, that's still far from being a MIDI uh, drum computer, right? Or a MIDI uh, tracker. So you need a way of um, entering values into the registers or into the RAM, right? And play back the drum notes and pitch numbers basically from there so you can make drum patterns and tracks. So the only thing really that's a uh, writable memory that the Microtronic really has is um, it's 16-4-bit uh, registers, right? And it has an extra register set also, like the Z80 or so. So you have 32 4-bit registers, but that's really it, right? So you cannot write to RAM. And you also don't have a, a computer jumps, you know, you can load the program counter and jump to a certain address. So all the uh, addressing, the jumps in the uh, are to ab absolute addresses, right? So really in order to write a program that based on user input plays a, a specific drum a pitch note, right? Um, you really need to have an opcode that um, reads values, right, from the registers and outputs that MIDI. So, uh, and for that, I mean, this is really a little usability update, right? As you guys say, okay, you know, that is a single board computer uh, that you program in machine code using seven segment uh, display and hex, right? So usability, what is that guy talking about, right? But actually even for uh, simple systems like this, there are usability aspects. For example, a blinking cursor makes a huge difference, right? And the original Microtronic didn't have that. So for the programming mode, you see where input is expected, right? Whether you are inputting the opcode, P, right? Or whether you are inputting the address, A, right? So, and I had this for the programming mode, right? So you could basically see what you're doing, whereas the original Microtronic didn't give you that feedback, right? So sometimes you would input a digit, right? And you would be confused as to where it showed up on the display. So that I already had basically from the beginning as a basic usability enhancement. But what I did not have and uh, what I wanted to show you now, which oops, makes a big difference, is um, for keyboard input, right? So what you do uh, have is you display um, basically the registers and their current values. And I load a demo program here from EEPROM from slot F. And um, now I have loaded a program that demonstrates what I mean. So F60 is basically the display six registers starting from register zero opcode. So it displays register zero, one, two, three, four, five. And now we are inputting, this is the keyboard input command, input a value from the keypad uh, four bit into the register zero, input that into register one and so on, right? And if you run this program, what you get as feedback is, okay, you see the six digits of the recurrent register values and now the program halts basically and waits for your input and this is indicated by the question mark here, right? Of course, now I can put in values and you see that the current register positions uh, which received that input are updating. And now actually I switch to uh, four more registers here from 6, 7, 8, 9, right? And they are now being input in reverse position, right? So you see now it starts with register 9, then 8, then 7, and 6. And that's, of course, in the program. 
And now the program halted again because I'm inputting a register position now which is not displayed, right? So I push a button now and that goes to some register, right? And I don't have any indication basically that this is not one of the values here. So that's happening in the background. I know the program is expecting input because of the question mark, but that's basically it, right? And now I'm back. There's a go-to. The program starts again from the beginning. So now if I maybe put in 5, 4, 3 again, then there's no change. And only if I put in 9, I see that positions are changing, right? So what I want here is a blinking cursor as well. And I consider that a big deal for usability because you really get confused. So let me quickly make a change in my Arduino IDE, which you don't see here, which I have um, online, right? And <clears throat> on the other screen, and I now have the programmer also connected. So I'm going to upload um, the patch to the firmware and then show you the same program and showing that this is doing much better, basically, in terms of usability. Okay, upload using programmer. So it's uploading right now. You can see that my USB tiny program is flashing a bit here. That takes about, I don't know, 20-30 seconds. I'm using almost all of the program memory by now. It's a big um, program, the firmware. And also in terms of SRAM, um, I'm, well, I, I still have 200 bytes or so left in SRAM. So almost done. It should be rebooting soon. And then you get the welcome message on the vintage LED bubble display, which is a bit flashy. As you see, it's scrolling, you know. Uh, hard to read, but uh, it's not an, not an alphanumeric display. It really is only seven segment hex, and the library I'm using that also has some approximation for ordinary alphanumeric. Um, okay, let's load the same program now again with a patched firmware from slot F from the EEPROM. And if you remember, um, it shows the six digits and expecting input. And now we get a blinking cursor, right? Now I see basically where I'm inputting um, the value, and that of course makes a big difference. When you turn off the lamp, you see it a bit better. And um, also if we are inputting now a value which is basically out of the display range, then you see, okay, nothing is blinking, but you still get a question mark, so that means something in the background is happening and being input, but it's not one of the registers that are currently on display. And of course you should avoid such programs, but it might happen. So yeah, and all of these changes are of course fully uh, compatible with um, the existing Microtronic um, programs and opcodes. So this is a 100% compatible um, upgrade basically in terms of usability. So there's a lot of software for this little computer from 1981 to 1984. Even programming contests have been <coughs> um, executed for this little machine and there was even a book with computer games like things like you know Lunar Landing and Tic-Tac-Toe and the Nim game and Blackjack and all that so there's definitely like 50 to 100 programs published for this machine and it was also my first computer so yeah so why did I actually do this because as I said we are writing a drum computer a drum sequencer right and you have to have a way to input the MIDI drum notes. So my thinking is that I have like 16 uh, predefined drums, pitch notes, so I don't need 7-bit um, MIDI note messages, but only 4-bit for a drum number from 0 to F. And then I can use the 32 registers and input basically the drum pattern like this. And for a complex drum pattern, of course, you, you know, you if you're inputting a lot of values, you really want a blinking cursor. So that's the whole purpose of, of doing that, right? Alright guys, so that was my second update for the Retro Challenge. Hope you enjoyed it and yeah, see you soon. Bye.